But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, Jesus asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, it is a great joy to be here. What is happening in today's readings and gospel? The thought that comes to mind for me is comparison and our egos and how it doesn't serve us. If you recall when you were a child, maybe this happened to you, you would fall and skin your knee and go running to your mother or father crying and they would kiss it better and pat you on the head and tell you it's gonna be okay. And then what happened? We grew up and when someone told you it was gonna be okay, it wasn't. What happened? Our egos are an essential part of our life. They're part of who we are. They develop who we believe we are, protect us in times of need, in times of conflict, and gives us a sense of rules uh, to interpret the world around us. But when they're left unchecked, it turns into a selfish, self-serving demigod that sits on the throne in our hearts. If we use proper ethics, it can temper this and we journey in our life through maturity. As Catholics, we're baptized and we're gonna start discipleship right here for this young one. And we get to witness this this evening. So it's the Holy Spirit had this plan for us all along. This conversion that we seek when we receive the Eucharist, we're partly converted into the brothers and sisters of Christ, is a call to discipleship. And as we journey through our lives, we're going to suffer. And if we unite our suffering with Christ, it's transformative. We become more empathetic, more compassionate, more understanding, more sympathetic, more kind. These disciples said, they didn't say actually, they did not understand what he was saying and they were afraid to ask him. So what happened? They let their egos take over. They took out their lists of what they've done and they said, well, at least he didn't just rebuke us. It wasn't me. And they compare. They compare one another and they start creating a pecking order of who is better than the other. Their egos demand uh, us to tear one another down so that we can be better than one or the other. And at least we're not like him and at least we didn't do that. Or the opposite, I could never be like him or as good as him or her. And I could never do that. The devil doesn't care which way we go as long as it's not the Lord's way. If you want to be prideful, he'll tell you all the things you're good at. If you want to be self-deprecating, he will gladly point out all your faults. When we unite these to Jesus, there's only one tool that we can use that can defeat the devil, and it's humility. The devil is not humble, so he has no defense against this. So Jesus died on the cross for our sins, rose from the dead so that we could be saved. And in humility, we come before him. There isn't anything we can do to earn our salvation. It is only through God's grace. And only during this humility can we surrender our suffering to Jesus, unite it to him on the cross so that we may be transformed with him. Discipleship actually means to become like the teacher. And Jesus said, when you are fully formed, you will be like the teacher. So our journey in life and our discipleship is to become like Christ. And through our suffering, we develop eyes of Christ so we can see ourselves 
see Christ in ourselves through our suffering, in our brokenness, we can recognize him. And this gift gives us the ability to recognize Christ in others who are suffering. It's easy to see Christ in a sunset. Can we see Christ during a terminal illness or a struggle? We have to look. And we pray for eyes to see and we pray for wisdom. Wisdom said in the first reading and the opening line is very important. The godless say. And it talks about how people don't accept this humility, don't accept this teaching, don't accept this rule because they don't like it. It bristles against them. It makes people uncomfortable to be vulnerable with each other, with themse- with ourselves. So we're asked, and Jesus says, takes this child because this is the very example we started with. In reconciliation, we come to Jesus with our sins and our bumps and our bruises, and we bring them to him, and he kisses them and pats us and says, it's going to be okay. It doesn't take them away just the same way that a mother's kisses doesn't remove the scrapes, but it gives us the ability to bear them and gives us the ability to move through them, and it gives us the ability to use these experiences to be more empathetic, more compassionate, more understanding, and we recognize that everyone is in a hard trial, and we journey with one another with vulnerability because I've been there, and we can recognize and comfort one another. This is what God is asking us to do as disciples. So it's easy to see disciples here, sacristans, servers, deacons, priests, musicians, welcomers, but there's disciples out in our community. If you visit the poor or an aging parent, that is discipleship. This encouragement to recognize Christ in everyone we meet is discipleship. We're about to celebrate a baptism, which is the embarking on this journey. And the godparents have a very special (coughs) task to lead this discipleship for this child. May they they be a good example for her. May they remind her Christ loves them. May their love for one another and this family inspire this Christ-like love and humility. And Jesus will welcome us on the last day when he holds up the broken body of Christ and says, behold the Lamb of God, we will look upon him and live. We're in communion with everyone who's gone before us. And we look forward to that day when we see God face to face. I now invite the family of Eloise, and I invite all of us to to stand. So parents and godparents of Eloise, 